Church for sending me to join for our national convention. Uh, Tuesday and Good Friday, well, I was able to join to go between Wednesday and Thursday. Thank you so much. I felt refreshed and uh, renewed. I also received personal revelations to the Lord. In fact, most of my sermon should be a derivative uh, from the National Convention. Now, this morning, initially, I would like to uh, share a little bit, pound a little bit, about the blessings of God with uh, the message on the last days. Well, I do not have, ladies and gentlemen, to convince you that we really, not, we really are now in the last days. I really do not have to persuade you because you know that you know inside your heart. Even as you checked it in the Word, we now are living on the 11th hour. Amen? We are now in the last days. Now, I would like to lead you this way. Come on. Listen to this. This is the Word of God for all of us today. And this is His promise. Definitely, that before of the return of our Lord Jesus Christ, he is going to equip His people, of course, to include particularly in the area of finances. That our finances by the grace of God will going to be overflowing. And God will going to do it and God will going to fulfill it for one and one single reason. It's not for self-service. God will going to do it for you and for me, and in general for the church, to be able to fulfill the Great Commission. You hear, you hear it. Amen? Amen. Let's give the Lord a clap of praise. I want you to look to someone else and stare into his eyes and tell the person, tell the next person, God is raising you up for this purpose. Amen. Jesus is coming back. God is serious in His business. In fact, 2,000 years ago, God Almighty did already gave His best investment. They were not gold, or they were not only silver, or they were not only angels. He sent His only begotten Son, the best of God, and the best of His investment. Jesus gave Himself that you and me can be free, can be liberated, can no more live in darkness, but follow Him into His marvelous life. Have you seen to how the Lord had changed your life? Have you seen to how 180 degrees turn around? The Lord, you know, transformed your former dark, darkness life and now into His marvelous life. Come on, amen. The only thing that happened, you know, overnight or just in a blink of an eye. But I guarantee you, every single day is a day of miracle. To Him be the glory and to Him be the honor. Amen. Amen. But you know what? God ain't yet done. Every day He's guiding us. He's leading us. Generations, centuries, and uh, kingdoms, kings and kingdoms, and empires have risen and fallen. And the age and the time is about to be consummated. Jesus is coming back. And God is about, God is about to give the best of his shot. Would you place your palm to your chest and tell yourself, I as well must give my best, my best shot. Come on. I myself will give my best shot. Let's give the Lord a clap of praise. This a byproduct of what I received from a national convention. It's not some, something which I, I, may, I may call as like, it may seem or it would seem not that terror. But definitely, one of the worst that God will have to do in the last days is this. He will have to equip His people. Of course with the anointing, of course with the power. Of course with the signs, of course with the wonders, with the miracles. You know that guest we, we had last uh, national convention, 
He's telling us that we are not to be bothered, we are not to be derailed to all of the wrong things happening around in the Philippines. National calamities, the corrupt politics we have in, uh, in our country. For these things, somehow the Lord is allowing to prepare and equip the church. That does not mean that gross evil are happening around in the republic, in our country, in the land that God is not a word. In fact, the light of God can be best appreciated when there is that cross darkness. Amen. You know, when even just a small flicker or a small flame of a candle, when you light it, you know, in, in such a dark, you know, in a such dark room, you know, the light dispels, you know, the, uh, the thick darkness. That's how is what the Lord doing in our country now and in this time. Amen? Amen. And you know what? To the church of God in the Philippines, we are on the threshold. In fact, many of the people of God are starting to experience this. And you know what? You and I are prospective because this is for everyone. I'd like you to look to, to the next person beside you. Tell that brother, tell that sister, that is for you as well. Come on. Financial overflowing belongs to you and to me. We are perspective. But I must qualify that line. If we are able to appropriate God's single condition. By the way, I will leave you, ladies and gentlemen, to my sermon this morning. What in heaven pastor is all about Shunammite and Shunammite woman? Now, Shunammite woman is a kind, okay, the Shunammite pastors and all over the world, church is calling us the Shunammite anointing. Shunammite anointing is the ability where the Holy Spirit is giving to the believers to help the work of God in the last days. These are certain individuals who are incapable by God, blessed by God, who do have some obscure and ordinary beginning, ordinary, uh, what is this, origin, and amazingly, and a mind-boggling something happened to them, and you cannot explain how did it happen, but just in a one single word, it was just but a miracle how did it take place. That their lives become blessed. And that happened because God is raising them up definitely to finance the gospel. I tell you, ladies and gentlemen, the Great Commission are not just all about signs and wonders. They may be our 90%, but it's something about, included as well, finances. I tell you, it takes finances to preach the Word of God. And it's not, and it's not, it's, it's, it is not, and spiritual, you know, to speak finances, you know, in the pulpit or in the church. For the Lord says, to where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Amen. 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 Let's give the Lord a clap of praise. I thought it was, I thought it was Elijah, so I apologize for writing in there. God raised up a Shunammite woman to complete the ministry of the prophet, it should be Elijah. Elijah was a young man. He didn't care whether he did have money or not. He didn't care whether he would have food or not. He didn't care whether he would have a vehicle or not. All he cared was this, on his time that he could fulfill the ministry of God. And that should be our case. Whether we receive an honorarium or not, that shall not matter. Amen. <laughs> Whether we be praised or not, that shall not matter. Oh, ang gandang komenta nun. Pag may magsabi kayo sa iyo, be nice and say thank you. Many of us, the old way is this, oh, hindi yun ako, hindi yun. So, sino yung komenta? It was you, actually. Ibig sabihin, yung gift mo, yung anointing mo, glorifies the Lord. Be nice and say thank you. Amen? But that's not our objective, to receive praises from men. Our objective is this, that we can deliver what the Lord gave us as an errand. I tell you, ladies and gentlemen, we are unworthy servants. 
But to the part of God, I tell you, he is also not an unjust king. And he seen to it every time as we are able to faithfully dispense our duties. He seen to it that you are well rewarded. Amen. Far and beyond. Amen. Because our God is a good God. Amen. Let's give God the Lord a lot of praise. Si Elisha, ano po? Siya po'y kalbo. Siya po'y batang bata pa. Pero siguro sa traits yung ganon, mababasa kasi natin yun sa Bible. Palagi po siyang dumadaan sa itong isang ano, small town o was it a city called Shunem. Tapos may dalawa po, may isa pong kopol, matanda pong kopol. Magpapastor to Dre, sige lang Dre, alam po, okay lang, let him leave. Pero when he bags, ayaw po din natin, pero okay lang yun. <laughs> si BJ, ganito talaga siya eh, si BJ. Okay. Palaging dumadaan ito si Elisha dito sa lugar ng Shunem. Tapos, <laughs> nakisipin ka, Pastor ka. Pagpapas na ikaw, paglagi mo na ka. <laughs> Jay, okay lang yun, Dre. Amen. Itong couple na to, palaging dumadaan, hindi, si Elisha palaging dumadaan. Tapos itong couple na to, sa tagal ng panahon, hindi talaga sila nagkaanak. Para bagang sila po'y nagsukong na lang ba to the truth and the reality na hindi na talaga tayo magkaanak. Pero nang talaga ganun kasi yung mga pamilya no po, they tried all of their best until 5 years, 10 years, 15 years, until I don't know how long. Sabi nila sila, hindi na talaga siguro tayo magkakanak until they met this man. Meron kasi tayong date to destiny. Bawat isa po sa atin yung Araw-araw, things seem to be ordinary until we hit this destiny. At karamihan po sa atin, hindi natin yun alam yung we collided into the destiny and wala, we just realized, hey, how did it happen? It was all the grace of God. Palapakan na natin siya. Palagi itong dumadaan at saka nag-perceive talaga nila tungkod pa paglalakad-lakad si Elisha kasi typical prophet you know yung yung may ano siya yung kanyang damit saka may ano may shawl at kanyang at kanyang ulo nang sabi ng ano sabi ng babae let us build a place for this man meron siyang dalawang itong couple na to husband and wife meron dalawa pong magandang bagay ginawa sila sa kay Elisha unang pagdaan-daan ni Elisha they offered him food Parang kayo, ano po? Kasi ako po, kayo yung Shunamite. Hindi ma kayo women lahat, but you are my Shunamite people. I cannot just imagine how can I fulfill Sister Delia and my family and my personal calling because this calling is not mine, it's the Lord. This is our calling as well. The Lord's ministry, I cannot just imagine how I may be able to fulfill this ministry without you. I must be grateful and thankful to the Lord for sending you around. And ladies and gentlemen, we are yet halfway. It's still a long way, but it's going to be a step at a time. And every step is a damn step of miracle. Amen. I think that, that is nice, amen? Yeah? That's very good. Palapakano natin si Lord. Ay, ano? <laughs> yung propeta hindi masyadang malaking kumain. Hindi, talagang nagpaslay na ano, ng cow. Maraming pagkain. Sige na, prophet, kumain ka. Ubusin mo tulawal. <laughs> Ganun kasi magbibless si Lord eh. Magbibigyan ka yung talagang sobra sobra. Palaging dadaan tsaka dadaan daan. And then na-realize ko ng mag-asawa na permanent itong prophet na doon na pumupunta doon. Tsaka ito yung transfix place niya ba? And the prophet needs to have a room to stay. May apat kong sinagest yung kanyang asawang babae sa kanyang asawang lalaki. Sabi niya, let's make a small room on the roof of our walls and put there for him number one a bed, a table, a chair, and a 
a lamp. You just imagine this was the Old Testament, where there were no computers, where there no iPad, where there no cell phones. But perhaps those those thoughts, these things written in the Bible, were the top of the line that moment at the time. Kaya na po yung mga tao relatively na tumutulong po na nagpupulfill sa ministry in these last days, in this time, ang tawag po sa kanila, quote and quote, they are the Shonamite people. Believe me, being your pastor, I confirm every one of you, including Andre, Andre, little Andre, talika na, including little Andre, he is also a Shonamite. That's why, thank God, you are an ordinary person. 
Because the ministry, if not all the time, most of the time, do not expect you to become a vessel. But wala, God's always picking you up to be the Shunammite person. There were these people hugging me and kissing me, telling me, Pastor, you're so, you're so, she's so nice. Happy trip. And in the old way, when people would shake you and you're feeling something rough in their palm, you know that you know it's with a bill, and you check the bill, and oh my God, and I was placing the bill in my, in my pocket, and I ended and I was blessed just more than enough. Then I, when I arrived to the Malino, I blessed my mom, I kissed my mom, and was able to bless her. And my mom had an older sister, 78 years old. I had seen this aunt for 25 years. I blessed her also. And my family there, they were very happy. And they just told me and sat down as I talked with them. They were introduced. By the way, my cousins also married, very young. Someone at the age of 16 or 18. And uh, the children are now outside, are 11 to include to what? She's bearing is exactly one, one dozen. Well, so healthy. Well, farmers, they sleep early at night. You know, they eat healthy food. I mean, the produce of the land, vegetables. They, they eat fish, they don't eat pork. So, as I was sitting there, the Lord telling me, one day, son, you're coming back, your ministry coming back in this place. You gonna continue what you started years ago. Maybe I told you this. When the Lord called me, my first ministry that I went on was to Malino. But I, I found out I wasn't ready on that time. God would have to build my bones yet inside. God would have to train me yet. But this time, I just still feel that it's almost at about time to start off. I don't know when and how. But I just so feel. You know, my relatives, just my relatives, one single cousin, I could, we could bring to the Lord. they already a dozen children, mother and father. And you know, I have a niece who also married very young and they already have five children. Then I just smiled and I, 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 I was like mixed up how to address them. Are you Kasim or are you Anis? Are you an Apu? Somebody came to me at the age seven, six, five, three, four. And I was introduced by my cousin telling me, Dom Kasim, uh, my, my, my nickname, my name is Dodo, Kadudum, <laughs> Kadudum. Uh, this is already your Apu. Oh my God. I'm my grandpa already. And uh, big blessing me and I hug and I kiss them, you know. And I will have to bless them. I will have to buy for them. To show to them that our God is a good God. It's, it's not a showing up. It's not a parade. But just to tell them a testimony. That we got a better God than their God of this world. God of hardship. God of poverty. Amen. Amen. I tell you it's indeed more blessed to give than to receive. Amen. Amen. We may not have the many and the millions or I don't know how much. But even the little that you have, they are enough to become a Shulman. Amen. Palagpakanan natin si Lord. So, kaya niyo yung katabi mo, pat the, uh, what is this, the show and tell, tell the brother, tell the sister, you are a Shulman person. Si Elijah pala ito, no? Talbo. Sa araw, sinabihan ng mga bata, 52. Ah. Kasi itong panahon na to, si Elisha, the nation was backslidden. Grabe talaga. Kaya nga, kapatino yung mga bata, walang respeto. Salamat sa Panginoon, sa pagat tayo ngayon nakalapit sa Panginoon, we can instill values to our kids. Doon ako sa iligan. Nag-type ako ng call ang pinadala ko dito sa Sambuanga City. Meron po sa lumbangan, anak at saka tatay na naaaway. Pag tayo ganit mga anak, mag-argue ganit tayo sa ating mga parents, listen to me, children. Pag tayo ganit na mag-argue tayo kasi nagkakasta tayo ng opinion sa ating mga parents, pag ang parents ganit natin mag-insist 
ng kanilang idea kahit kahit uh, ano yun, yung tama ikaw. It's not that you are you are yielding to the wrong but it is what you call respect. It's what you call reverence and honor. Pag mag argue ni kayo sa yung parents, do not lengthen it to be 2-3 hours. Siguro max 5 minutes. Let them win. Because they are our parents. That do not mean that you are weak. That do not mean that you you yield to the wrong. You honor them. Children, honor your parents in the Lord. Amen. 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 Ito po yung resulta, yung lahat po natin, ano, yung expenses na yung 
Ibenta lang ng ano, ng pagkain. Karamihan estudyante. Pero there is the question mark, how did we make it? Well, we have some other church members who are outside, they are sending their tithes. But generally, what I'm pointing here is, God is always prone to use the weak. God is always the usual way to pick up the nobody and the nothing. But when they can do something, all the glory and honor shall be down solely to the name of the Lord. Everybody says, Praise God. Praise God. So it was in verse 9, and she said to her husband, Behold now, I know that this is a holy man of God who is continually passing away, passing our way. Sabi ng babae sa kanyang asawang lalaki, nagsasuggest niya ba? Ibig sabihin, ang idea na yung natutulungan yung ministry, hindi yung lalaki. O sino yung mga brothers dito? Tayo. Ang lalaki pala ang pasig dito. Wala lang. Wala lang. Tayo talaga mga lalaki. No? Ang mga babae talaga ang palaging nakakatita. Kaya nga, women are more blessed. You know? In some area. Sabi na kanyang asawang babae sa lalaki, tulungan natin yung kawawa naman. Kailangan i-build natin siya ng bahay. Doon sa itaas. Kailangan pakainin natin siya. Tulungan natin siya. Eh, yung lalaki, oh, sige. Okay, wala, no problem. Okay. Tayo talaga mga lalaki, ano? Okay. Okay. Yung mga babae ba? And you know what? The Shinomite woman suggested to her husband, sabi pa ng speaker, it was unlikely daw to the customs of the Jews in the Old Testament. Because it, it was, uh, it was, uh, it was not an abomination, it was, it was offensive for a woman to influence the man in the time. Because in the Old Testament, women are in a lesser footing compared to the men. But at this time, we really can see, second time around, that God uses, you know, a weaker vessel. Salamat naman kasi yung lalaki na kinig sa kanyang asawang babae. Amen? So pag tayo ganit may isang brother, isang sister, na makita natin, ginagamit sa Panginoon, ginagamit po ng Panginoon, anong tawag ito? We, we are to appreciate them. As I said a while ago, we are not to, we are not to underestimate them. And when we, they are able to dispose what they are able to do. Uh, contribute to the ministry, we are to appreciate them. Amen? Palagpakan doon natin si Lord. Sabi, sabi po ng babae, let us build him a room to their, let us build him a room to our rooftop. Ito palang mga bahay sa, ano, sa Israel noon, pag nasa rooftop ikaw, ito yung best place. Hindi gaya na sa atin ngayon, no? na pag nasa rooftop ka gani, dito sa Zamuaga, pa, ano yun, kunti-kunti yun, ano, rent. Sa baba kasi, that's 25. Dito, kasi nasa taas 23. Kasi aakit ikaw, ha? What if lahat ng mga tao noon, ano, yung may arthritis, you know, may rheumatism, ah, what the... Yung sa rooftop, kasi Israel daw is a healing country. So, people would build their houses, you know, uh, beneath, beneath the, ano, the hill. Tapos yung, ano, yung kalsada daw, mas mataas yung kaysa bahay. Kaya na nasa rooftop, kasi yung profits is the best place para paglabas, level ka agad sa daan. Hindi na yung, ano, pag nasa baba daw, aakyat pa. Ibig sabihin, itong babaeng to, alam talaga niya, magpapahalaga sa work ng Panginoon. Itong babaeng to, Marunong talaga magpapahalaga sa servant po ng Diyos. Amen? Hello? Amen. Sabi po ng ano, speaker namin, pag tayo na ay nagtitigay ng ating tithes sa ka-offering, huwag daw yung tira-tira. Kasi sasakit daw ang tiyan ng Panginoon. 
Kasi pag tayo kumakain, hindi tayo kumakain yung tira-tira. Amen. Pag tayo na yung nagbibigay ng tithes at saka offering ko namin, best daw. Alala ko, may dalawang bagay ako nung nakikin ako sa kanya. First time kasi nakita yun. Yung mga Koreano, pag sila po ay pumupunta sa church, when they, when they uh, give their tithes and their offerings, yung bills daw nila, pinaplansya nila. Or else, the last day of the banking day, yung tithes at saka offering nila, pinachange nila daw sa sa bangko para magpunta sila sa church. New bill. These are custom. Hindi natin makikita yan sa Bible kasi wala na silang bill noon. Pero ang, ang ibig sabihin nito, the principle, the law of when you are helping the ministry, you are helping not the leftover. You are helping the best of it. The best portion of it. Si Adal at saka si Cain, ang diferensya po, pareho kasi silang nagbigay eh. Diba? So, bakit hindi ako ni-bless ng Panginoon? Yung nagbigay, ako nagbigay. Bakit kaya? Ang diferensya po, sa pagkat si Abel selected and went to the fattest of the firstborn of the animal. Pero si Cain, basta hila ng hila lang, ang naibigay niya din ang iba, yung pumpkin, yung, kasi yung farmers yan, no? yung upo, may uod na pala sa ilalim, so hindi best. Amen? So, ayun, binibless ang babae. Now, I would like to close with some, are you getting me? Amen? I like us to place our palm to your chest and tell this with me. The Lord is raising me up as He should have made in these last days. Amen. Palakpangan na natin si God. Kaya nga, sabi po ng istorya, you read the entire chapter 4 of 2 Kings. Ano yung need ng mag-asawa, yun ang binigay sa kanila. God bless the old couple with a child. Matanda na po sila, nagkaanak pa sila. Nansi, no? There was, I will close with saying this, relating to you this story. Itong pastor na to, meron doon sa isang miembro. Labadera. Doon lang ako nakakita, no, while nagpipreach yung pastor, hindi po pinupwersa yung mga member, oh, including me. While nagpipreach pa yung pastor, yung mga tao tumatakbo at saka nagbibigay na ng offering. Ay na, talaga. At saka, hindi isang beses, dalawa, patlong beses. At saka na-understand kasi nila yung ano yung value at saka yung, it is the investment. It is the seed that they are planting. Kasi kung hindi talaga tayo nagpa-plant, ito yung qualification. Hindi tayo maka-harvest. Ano, maka, maka so to the laundry woman, 700 a week lang daw yan sa Manila. Yun daw palagi nag-bibless at saka tumutulong sa ministry ng pastor na to. Sabi ng pastor, meron daw anak tong laundry woman na to kasi nagpa-plant siya sa ministry. Ngayon daw, March or April, mag-graduate sa isa sa mga university sa Quezon City as mag-graduate daw sa LLB that's in the College of Law ang major daw ang international law. Pag-detake ng bar, labandera lang. Ganun yun eh. Pag isang tao po ay Shunamite, si Lord talaga ang bahala sa kanya. Amen? So pag ikaw gani, ordinary ikaw, if you feel you're a weaker vessel, you are qualified. Amen? Amen? Amen. You receive the word of God this morning? Amen. We will have our communion. Let's all stand.